is Mrs. Robertson and today we're going to talk about mean, median, mode, range. These are called your measures of center or central tendencies and we're going to talk about when to use which one. Appropriate measures. Alright, now we went over the first, the front side of the worksheet from yesterday. Um, the other answers, if I get a chance, I'll post them into your Google Classroom later today so you have the answers to them. But um, we're going to focus on this worksheet here. These are sixth grade standards too, so I want to make sure you really understand these because I know a lot of you skipped sixth grade. Um, appropriate measures. The most common measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. The range is also used to describe a set of data. To find the mean of a data set, you find the sum of the data values and then divide by the number of items in the set. You all know that, so put a check mark. Now, it says to find the median of a set of data, you put the values in order from least to greatest. If you don't, you're going to get the wrong median. And then uh, divide by, oh, let's see. And then find the middle number. If there are two middle numbers, add the two middle numbers together and divide by two. Any questions on that? Put a check mark. Mode. The mode of a data set is the number of the number number or numbers that occur most often. If no number occurs more than once, the data set has no mode. Now, this is something we did not talk about yesterday. Outliers. An outlier is a data value that is much greater or much less than the others in the data set. Outliers skew your data. That means it can mess it up. All right? So we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Now, when do you use the mean to describe your data set? You use the mean is most useful, or the mean is most useful when the data has no outliers. So when you don't have an outlier in your data set, then you're going to use the mean. Okay? That's going to be the good measure of center to use. When do you use the mean? When there are no outliers. The median is most useful when the data have one or more outliers, but no big gaps in the middle of the data. So when you have outliers, use the median. You got it? Your middle number. The mode is most useful when the data have many identical numbers. So when they have many identical numbers, many identical numbers, use the mode. Any questions on that? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I think there was one over there on the bar. Okay. All right, now let's look at the example. It says find the mean, median, and mode of the data set. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. The ages and years of relative stain at your home are listed at the right. Okay, the mean is 18. Okay, these were the ages of the people that stayed. The median, arrange the numbers in order from least to greatest. Now, is there an outlier in that data set? What is the outlier in that median data set? 89. It is much larger than all the others, isn't it? So here, the, the middle numbers are 8 and 10. You add them together, divide by 2, and the median is 9. And the mode, there are two of them. The mode, 2 and 14. Now it says, which one of those would you say best describes the data set? Since there's an outlier, which one is the best representation of that data set? Yes, Madeline. The median. It's the best representation. Why? Because it has an outlier. All right, because when you look at that group of numbers, the mean is 18. There is no one in the house that's even 18, is there? But the median, we said, is 9. 9 looks about like in the, the middle of the group, doesn't it? So see how 9 
is a better representation of that group than 18? Yes. So, like, the outlier is, like, the number that is furthest away from, like... It's, like, either really, really larger than all the other numbers or really, 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 really smaller than all the other numbers. They stick out. It's like, wow, that doesn't fit in with the group of kid ages, does it? No, it looks like Grandma has a whole bunch of kids over at her house, doesn't her grandkids? Okay, if you look at, these are all ages of people that lived in the house, or that were at the house. Grandma looks like she has her grandkids all over, all by herself. I don't know. 89 years old to have that many kids at your house, two two-year-olds? I don't know too many 89-year-olds that would really want to have. I guess the older kids could help. Yeah. But the oldest grandkid is what, 14? So the 14-year-old could help with the 2-year-olds. But maybe their 14-year-old's taking care of grandma. I don't know. I think I think someone took advantage of grandma on that problem. Okay. Now, let's Let's look at what I'm going to have you do for your homework so you can get going on it and it's all classwork and you don't have homework tonight because I know you kids, if you work hard, you shouldn't have to have any homework. So, it says, which measure of center best represents the data? Justify your selection and then find the measure of center. All right, kids. Now, if I look at this one in number one, is there an outlier in number one? What is it? 16. It's much bigger than all the others. I'm going to underline it. So what am I going to find? Am I going to do the mean, median, or mode? Median. The median. Now there, there is three scores of zero, but in this case, I think the median is the best because you have an outlier. So you're going to find the median, and when it says justify your selection, why are we going to be doing the median? because there is an outlier. And the outlier is 16. So now we have to find the median in this data set. So let me find my, here's my blue pen. Let me put them in order. It is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, nope, two twos, a 3, and a 16. So my middle number, 0, 16, 3, 0, 2, 0, it's in between a 1 and a 2 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, two middle numbers. So my median is one and a half. And that's a pretty good representation of that data set, wouldn't you say? The, the, the median is 1.5 goals. All right, any questions? Do you see what I want you to do on these problems? Let's go ahead and look at number two. What do you suggest we do in that one? Yes. The mean. There is no outlier, so we're going to do the mean. Why no outlier? So let's add those all together and divide it by 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. Plus 1 is 12. Plus 3 is 15. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 hours is the average spent painting. Any questions? All right. Um, go ahead and do the rest of this page. Do 3 and 4. And then on the back, there are 7 problems. Uh, let's look at to make sure. Find the measure of center that best represents the data. Justify your selection and then find the measure of center. So you're going to do the same thing. Do you have to find the mean, median, mode, and range of these? No. You choose one that you think answers it the best. Let's look at five and six. 
that best represents. It's the same. Now, number seven. This is one where you have to do more. Refer to the table of mountains on Mars in exercise five. Describe how, here you do have to find the mean, median, and mode of that data set. Um, are each affected if the height of Mount Mons is not included? So you have to find it, you have to find the mean, median, and mode with Mount um, Olympus Mons, and then you have to do the mean, median, and mode where you take it out and then compare them. So do you see what you have to do on number seven? And yes, you do have to do number seven, all right? You might do number seven first, and that way the other ones won't take very long to do. Any questions? All right, so why don't you do that? I'm going to do number seven right now, so if you have any questions, I, we can talk about it. Yes? Um, once I'm done with number seven, I might say yes, okay? Yes, you can use a calculator. All right, kids, let's work hard and have a good day.